Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road. We are here in Taipei, Taiwan at Computex 2024. And we have spent the last couple of days at Computex here doing exclusive coverage for Qualcomm. It's been a great couple of days, a lot going on in the industry. But this particular segment, excited to bring back all of the hosts. We've got the team here. We've got Ryan Schrout. We've got Anshul Sag. We've got Olivier Blanchard. How'd I do, buddy? We have Olivier Blanchard here, and we're gonna chat a little bit with all of you out there about our impressions of the overall event. Gentlemen, it's been a good couple of days. The jet lag is just starting to wear off in time for us to go home. <laughs> How are we all doing? I'm good, I've been here for a week, so I, I, uh, I haven't been jet lagged at all, so I'm not in a uh, equal position as you guys, but I can appreciate the difficulty <laughs> of having to do these interviews. And you and just you just couldn't go with it and just <coughs> give it to me there, huh? No. That's why I'm, we love I'm Anshul. Keep, I'm keeping it real. <laughs> Always keeps it honest for us. So gentlemen, I was thinking, let's start here. Let's start with the kind of the big overall macro perspective of the event. Olivia, I'll kick it off over to you. You know, first Computex, yep. uh -huh. lot going on here. Yeah, right. We've been first tracking time. all of these companies, all of these announcements. What's stuck with you over the last few days? Pace the pace, the acceleration of, of the space. So speaking specifically of, of AI PCs as a category, which two years from now we'll just call them PCs again, uh, and Copilot Plus, it's uh, sort of like Snapdragon started an arms race, I feel. And uh, we've definitely seen uh, AMD and Intel uh, respond this Computex, uh, even with Copilot Plus branding, which I thought was interesting. And then obviously all the OEMs uh, and the partners uh, sort of following suit, and it's everybody is trying to sort of elbow each other to the front and, uh, and find their lanes. And that's another thing that I find really interesting is, um, especially with the three different platforms, so AMD, Intel, and Snapdragon, everybody trying to find their lane and the specific value proposition that's going to be translated into choices uh, out in the uh, in the market, both on the commercial side and on the consumer side. So Anshul, Olivia said something kind of profound there. He said they won't be called PCs anymore. Or, sorry, you said they won't be called Copilot Plus or AI, 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 Plus, AI yeah. Plus or Copilot. So that's kind of an interesting inflection. Do you follow that sort of school of thought? Is this going to be a nomenclature that sticks, Copilot Plus, or are we going to be calling this? Or is a PC just going to be a PC? Uh, I, think, I think Olivier is right. I think we're going to be in a place where AI just becomes another capability of the PC. And... You know, we didn't really call them Wi-Fi PCs anymore, but that was a thing. Was it? Th there was a point where mm. Wi-Fi wasn't a standard feature. Um, and I think, you know, we'll, we'll see AI just become the next thing that's part of the fabric of Windows. And, you know, these next couple years will probably be a lot of, you know, infighting and lots of, you know, throat cutting and backstabbing. But um, <laughs> reality is that we'll see the AI become just another PC. and. Yeah, I don't really see it. I mean, right now it's you know heated and it's aggressive and there's lots of back and forth and I think it's exciting for a lot of us, but uh, eventually it'll become kind of boring. I think our conversation with Pavan kind of led into that same type of conversation, right? Like eventually this will just be part of every software, right? Uh, we, we kind of joke all the time about like not every so piece of software is AI software, but at some point it will be the case. There will be underlying language models or, or um, um, generation models or anything else that's going to that's gonna kind of move into every aspect of what we do. I think eventually we will just call them PCs. Oh, maybe maybe it'll be a totally new nomenclature at that point, some kind of like assistant, right, agent, whatever you want to get into it, because we've also talked about how the how the like form factors might physically change at the same time. Yeah, we saw that, and uh, you know, we heard in a Q and A this morning with Cristiano, he kind of, you know, looked at a, a picture. There was a slide of different form factors, and he said, you know, he saw the opportunity of all of them, and of course, that really makes sense with sort of Qualcomm's heritage of of low power, high performance, mobile form factors. You know, you uh, you know, you referenced Pavin. Um, and of course, for everybody out there, you know, we had a whole series, an exclusive series of content here. So we'll make sure we click the links, check the show notes, be part of this uh, part of this event. But uh, you know, Cristiano actually, Ryan said something to us when you and I sat down with him. Great interview. You should watch it. Um, and he talked about how applications as we know them will kind of go away. Apps as we know them will kind of change yeah. because of LLMs. You know, talk about a provocative thought. Like 
you know, right now we're so used to picking apps and using apps, but at some point when you're running six, seven, eight different language models on your phone, you talk to the model, it <coughs> figures out, it can actually render the graphic, it can create the, like, how much do you see that changing? How fast do you see this all happening? I think, I think it could be pretty quick. Uh, you kind of think back to when we brought in smartphones, we went from like websites to apps, right? There's some similar transition there of apps to agents or whatever nomenclature you want to use for it. Um, and, and we already see some of this, some of the unique hardware options that have come out that you know their whole job is to interface to an Uber app or interface into a, a food ordering app or something like With that. APIs. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I think that'll continue to be the case. So I'm curious to, to see how Windows handles that, how um, the PC ecosystem handles that. You know, when we were talking with um, uh, Steve Long from Lenovo earlier today, he kind of talked about like how they build their layers mm -hmm. on top of something like X Elite uh, and Windows to, to build their own, you know, kind of custom uh, tailored value proposition for commercial enterprise. Yeah, and Acer did the same thing in yeah. our sessions. And I'll add that I think you know, I've read this, the paper that Google put out, the 200-pager 200, 200 on assistance, um, but what it really talks about is these machine-to-machine -machine interfaces and yeah. how a lot of the AI we're going to be using in the future will be interacting with other AI and how that will change the interfaces. And during ASUS's keynote uh, yesterday, they talked about how the PC has transitioned from text to GUI to, you know, these LLMs and, 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 and conversational mm -hmm. interfaces. Yeah. So I think you guys are right that, like, we're going to see AI drastically change the way we interact with our PCs, but also what a PC looks like and how PCs work with each other and how we interface with them all at the same time. And it's interesting because the, you know, the abstractions are going to change, not just PCs, not just devices, edge, mobile phones, also enterprise and applications, you know. We've had um, conversations with CEOs of big enterprise software companies that are talking about a single pane of glass. Like right now, why do we need to go in from a CRM to an ERP to, a, you should be able to also use a language model to understand what you're asking for. Yeah. I want to see financial models. I want to see sales data. I want to see customer you know, contact center data. And you'll be able to do it all. So it'll work this way with our consumer sort of commercial business productivity apps. It's going to work all the way into the business applications. You know, Anshul, you're a uh, kind of a maven of all things XR. We had. You know, uh, Alex Katuzian joined us for a session. Al Alex leads uh, the XR business, talked a lot about it. And of course, I believe uh, Cristiano Amon extended that conversation mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. bit. But like, what about that? How does this sort of AIPC, uh, the contextualization of devices start to come to kind of tie together, and maybe bring that XR trend back to life? You know, I'll call it a stop start, but what I, do you call it? I would say that the XR trend has never stopped. It has just sped up or slowed down. Sped. So uh, right now with, with Apple and, and Vision Pro having kind of given that a little bit more energy, I think you're going to see that continue to move forward with all of the AI capabilities because a lot of people don't realize a lot of the fundamental AI capabilities we have today were actually came from XR because in XR you don't have a keyboard. So you have to have some, you know these language models reading your, what you're saying and, and mm, spitting it mm. back out you know hand tracking because you don't have controllers so all these things that that we're seeing in AI today and other places in the yeah, in this phone haptics, or on the PC anything. all these things were already in XR it just they weren't at scale um, so I think what's interesting is uh, a lot of these interfaces that we're seeing in the PC side are starting to kind of converge with what's possible in XR and I think you're going to see a tighter coupling of spatial computing with PCs, and you're starting to see it already, lots of PC makers are doing 3D displays again. And I think a reason why is because you're going to see people trying to collaborate with each other, whether it's in a headset or on a PC or on a smartphone. And now glasses free 3D is actually good, um, which as we all know, it really wasn't. Uh, and 3D TVs died very easily as a result of that. But uh, I believe in the future we will have a, a very strong convergence between what you do on the PC and what's possible in the XR device and the users will be none the wiser because they'll choose the, the interface they want because I don't think everyone's going to want to use put on a headset but they don't have to and I think that's that's going to be something that drives PCs in the future in terms of graphics capabilities and AI and I, I just think it's a it's a net positive for everybody and uh, it's a it's a great way to increase collaboration and, and creativity. And you look good in those Ray-Bans. I've seen you in them. You know, I the use them all the day. Yeah, those are pretty <laughs> all the cool. time, every day. So, uh, you know, we've got a few minutes left. I've, I've got something for Olivia and then Ryan. I'm going to let you take 
at home, but um, Olivier first, you know, we've talked a lot about kind of the things that were hot here. We talked about PCs, now we've talked about XR, you know, alluded a little bit to data center. Another area where, you know, Qualcomm has had a lot of successes in the automobile. Yeah. Uh, we talk about contextualization, we talk about the ability to go from like kind of device to device to device. Well, the car becomes a device, right? And they've had that huge 45 billion. You know, kind of curious as you're kind of seeing all the compute here, how do you see it extending to the edge and to other experiences like maybe the automotive experience? Yeah, so that's actually a point that came up when we were having an interview with uh, Don McGuire, okay. uh, which you should also watch. Uh, it's a great, great segment. You heard it there. Yeah. Um, but so it's it's about the, the Snapdragon brand as a whole. So now obviously we're talking about PCs because we're at Computex, but obviously they've been in mobile, they've been in XR, uh, they've been in automotive and they're, they're still accelerating there. Uh, there's wearables and hearables as well. So there's this whole Snapdragon ecosystem that works really well um, together. And I think just to kind of add to what Anshul was just talking about with um, how XR might actually make, not a comeback, but might sort of like swing back into the, the forefront of, uh, of, of like use cases. Yeah, I think that as people use voice and assistants and agents with their PCs a lot more, um, they'll become just sort of much more used to that type of interface. And so I think that, you know, smart glasses um, and XR will be a natural add-on in the next few cycles. So I, 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 I agree with you, and I think that's going to be kind of like the gateway. But I think we have a similar thing going on with automobiles. So right now we're talking about EVs and we're talking about software-defined vehicles. A lot of technology going into these cars. You know, we talk about data centers, and, and we're basically figuring out the technical layers um, in the vehicle. But ultimately, it's about experiences. All of this stuff is about experiences. And if you can create a sort of homogenized, like easy to easy to navigate experience across all of your devices, PC, phone, XR, and vehicle, you've got the winning combination. And so I think that um, where where Qualcomm is is actually really well positioned is they have a foot in all of these different areas, and they should be able to bring that entire ecosystem together uh, to create that sort of general, broad experience of, of AI and assistance and agents that doesn't really care what device you're using or what you're driving, it's always around you and it's always there to help. Yeah, and, and, and if Patrick were here, Patrick Moorhead, you know, my partner in crime, um, on, on the, we would be talking about doing a victory lap right now about how we got the diversification strategy right, called it out early, and now you're starting to see the market reward Qualcomm, and of course the, you know, Microsoft coming out, Best Buy coming out, they're starting to be rewarded the $45 billion pipeline. Look, this isn't, I mean, as analysts, it's our job to make calls about what we see in the tech industry, but it also sometimes the calls are made by the market. So I'm just always glad when we get it right early. Ryan, you run, Signal 65, which is the testing and performance business, and you've been doing testing and benchmarking and looking, and your, your team has been looking across the landscape. How do you see the performance evolving in this particular category? I mean, we've got, you know, we've got to get more performant, we need to get more power efficient, we need to see developers building apps. You've been doing this a long time. Love for you to kind of take us home. Give us your assessment. A very long time. Um, I, I think what has been super interesting to me is to hear uh, Microsoft take a very rigid stance on requirements. Um, I, I think in, in the past you might have seen Microsoft be a little bit more forgiving, maybe you can be a little bit under, yeah, power efficiency and it's not a big deal, it's only the battery life is good, and now they're saying you need to have this level of TOPS performance, it needs to be on an MPU, it needs to have this specific power efficiency requirement, and that is, I, I think the, the drive that's gonna make every silicon provider better. Right, because now, now there's nobody's going to take any shortcuts, and the Snapdragon X Elite is here first. It's going to be the first out the door to 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 address that issue, and that's fantastic. We talked a little bit with Pavan even today about how do you view this going forward. You know, more tops is going to enable more applications. More applications are going to require more performance, and he was pretty adamant that that's great, but it needs to maintain this power efficiency level. That's that's their vision. They don't want to get this get this kind of out, of out of balance. So, you know, I, I think how we look at performance is gonna change a little bit. There's, you know, people talk about tops and then people talk about tops per watt and they talk about, you know, uh, time to first token and all these other things. You were talking about how machines talk to machines. Um, this was something that, at, yeah, when we were at the build event uh, talking with like Stevie at Microsoft talking about time to first token, 
when you're communicating with a human needs to be very different than when you're communicating AI to AI, right? Mm -hmm. It needs to be a much quicker thing so that consumers can see can see that advantage. So I think starting to look at that and measuring performance in that way is going to be really important. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. For me, this is kind of like a uh, an interesting renaissance of performance matters. 20 years ago, it was just what's the frequency you can hit, right? And power be darned. Now it's, you know, how do we do this in the right way and, and get the performance where we need to get it from? Yeah, well, we got to auto GPT this crew so that we can do more <laughs> of these shows, more of these podcasts, more of these conversations. But gentlemen, I want to thank you all. It's been a great time. Appreciate you joining me here. Uh, let's do it more often. Let's bring uh, let's bring Mr. Morehead back too. You know, we got there's no a, breaks a spot for in the no breaks. We'll leave a spot needs. for him. But, yeah, yeah. but Olivier, Anshul, Ryan, great event, great show. See you all soon. And for all of you, we appreciate you tuning in. Join our community, subscribe, be part of this 6.5. We are on the road. We are at Computex, Taipei, Taiwan, 2024. Big inflection in the AI space. But for myself, for Ryan, for Olivier, for Anshul, we're signing off. We'll see you all later. <laughs>